Rational expressions. A rational expression is a quotient of polynomials. Here are two examples. When we talk about a rational expression, a rational expression is a fraction with variables in it. So a key note with fractions is you can have zero in the denominator or you can't divide by zero. So whenever you have zero in the denominator, it is undefined. So when we're talking about rational expressions, it is undefined for any value of x or the variable which makes the denominator zero. So in this example here, we want to find the values of x that would make the expression undefined. In order to find the value, you would have to set the expression in the denominator equal to zero and then solve for x. So when I take the x value or the expression in the denominator of the first rational expression, when I set x equal to zero, it's already solved and I find the value of that would create a zero in the denominator. So in this case, x cannot equal zero because then I would have zero in the denominator. Therefore, that would be a restriction on this rational expression. In the second rational expression, we actually have an expression in the denominator that I would have to set equal to zero. So I need to take that expression 2x plus 1 and set it equal to 0 and then I need to solve for x to find the value of x that would create a 0 in the denominator. So it's a two-step equation. The first thing I would do is subtract 1 from both sides and then I would divide through by 2 and I would get x equals a negative 1 half. If I were to take a negative 1 half and plug it into that 2x plus 1, I would get 0 in the denominator. Therefore, this is a restriction on the variable for that rational expression. So I can have any value of x except for a negative 1 half because I would get 0 in the denominator. Pause and try. So in this case, we set it equal to 0. I solve for x, I add 6, and then I divide through by 3. So when I have x equal to 2, I would get 0 in the denominator. Therefore, this would be the restriction on this rational expression. So now we want to work with simplifying rational expressions. So when we simplify rational expressions, the first thing you're going to need to do if you if if you have to, is factor. You're going to have to factor the numerator and you're going to have to factor the denominator. And then what you'll do is cancel out the common factors. Sometimes there might not be any common factors, but if there's common factors when you're simplifying rational expressions, you need to take them out or reduce them out. So here's an example. This is something that's already in factored form. So you would have a rational expression, you would factor it, it would look something like this, and then you would cancel out any common factors that are in the numerator and the denominator. So in this case, you see that we have a common factor of x minus 2 in the numerator and in the denominator, so we can cancel them out, and then what is left is my simplified rational expression. So in this case, I would end up with x minus 3 all over x plus 1. This next example, you want to factor first. Now in the numerator, I don't have to factor, it's a monomial, but in the denominator, I need to factor out the greatest common factor. So I'm going to factor out the greatest common factor here, which is the 2x squared, and then what's left is that 5x minus 1. Now that it's factored, I can reduce. So now I see that what's going to reduce here is that x, 2x squared and that 2x squared. So it's going to simplify, and I'm going to be left with 1 over 5x minus 1. This next one, I'm going to have to factor both the numerator and the denominator in order to simplify. So in the numerator, I see I have the difference of two squares, and that's going to factor to x plus 1 and x minus 1. 
In the denominator, I see I'm going to end up factoring, and again, it's factors of a positive 1 that will add up to a negative 2, so I end up getting a negative 1 times a negative 1. So I get x minus 1, x minus 1. Then I simplify by canceling out the common factors, and my simplified rational expression here would be x plus 1 over x minus 1. Pause and try. So you have to factor the denominator, the GCF. When I factor that, I end up having a common factor that I can reduce out, and I get 1 over 2z minus 1. Pause and try. So you factor the denominator here, and you end up getting a common factor of x plus 6. That's going to cancel out, and you're left with 1 over x minus 7. So now you see I have to factor not only the numerator and the denominator, but I also have in the numerator and the denominator a GCF. So you always want to check, do you have a greatest common factor that needs to be factored out first? So in this case, in the, in the numerator, I want to factor out the GCF, and the GCF in this case would be 3. And I'm left with 3 times x squared minus 3x minus 4. In the denominator, I want to factor out the GCF, and the GCF here is 6, and I'm left with 6 times x squared plus 5x plus 4. Now that I factored out the GCF, I have two simple trinomials that I can factor. So you're going to now need to factor those trinomials. So I'm going to factor the trinomials, and again, in the numerator, I need factors of a negative 4 that will subtract or add up to a negative 3. So I end up getting a positive 1, negative 4 as my factors. So I get 3 times x plus 1 times x minus 4. In the denominator, I see that I have factors of 4 that will add up to 5, so my factors would be 1 and 4, so I end up getting 6 times x plus 1 times x plus 4. Now I need to reduce or simplify. So what's going to simplify here is that 3 over 6, that's going to reduce down to 1 over 2, and then that x plus 1 over x plus 1 will simplify, and I get my answer is x minus 4 all over 2 times x plus 4. Pause and try. So in this case, I factor out the GCF, and I get 5 times x squared minus 6x plus 8. And in the denominator, I get 3 times x squared plus x minus 6. And then I factor the numerator, and I factor the denominator. So now I can simplify. And what's going to simplify here is the x minus 2. And I'm left with 5 times x minus 4 all over 3 times x plus 3. So now I want you to notice here, when you have something similar to this, 2 plus x over x plus 2, when it's addition, you can switch it around and simplify. So in this case, we would end up getting, when I simplify, 1. But when it's a minus, you can't just switch it around. In order to switch it around, you have to first pull out a negative 1. So when you switch it around, you have to pull out a negative 1 when it's a minus. And then you have, then you can simplify and you end up with a negative 1 as your reduced rational expression. So it's important to understand the difference between when it's switched around and it's a plus, and when it's switched around, it's a minus. When it's a minus, you have to pull out a negative 1, and then you can switch it and then reduce. So in this problem, we want to simplify the rational expression. Well, on the top, I need to factor out the GCF, and I have the difference of 2 squares, and I'm going to be left with 2 times 3 plus x times 3 minus x. And then in the denominator, I'm going to factor out the quadratic equation here, and I'm going to end up getting x minus 3, x plus 1. 
Now you see here, you have to rewrite that 3 minus x in order to have it x minus 3 so that we can reduce the top and the bottom. So the first thing you're going to need to do is rewrite that by pulling out that negative 1. Now once you pull out that negative 1, it's multiplication. You're going to end up having 2 times that negative 1. You can reduce those two common factors, and then you need to multiply that negative 1 to 2, and you end up getting a negative 2 times 3 plus x all over x plus 1. Because it's a minus, you need to pull out that negative 1. If it was that plus, that 3 plus x, you could just switch that around because addition doesn't matter. Pause and try. So you see here, I'm switching it around by pulling out the negative 5 first, and then I'm going to simplify, and then I'm going to end up with a negative 5, parentheses, x plus 2, all over x plus 3. So now when we want to multiply rational expressions, similar to fractions, you want to factor both the numerator and the denominator first, and then you're going to simplify. Reduce whatever is going to reduce and then multiply across with whatever is left. So let's see what this looks like. I'm going to be multiplying these two rational expressions together. So the first thing I need to do is factor. So now in the top, you see I have an x minus 2 squared. So I want to rewrite that as x minus 2 times x minus 2, because that's what that means. And then in the second rational expression, I'm going to factor out the GCF in the denominator, and the GCF is x, and I'm left with x times x minus 2. Now I'm going to simplify, and what's going to simplify here is just one of the x minus 2's, and then I'm going to simplify the x's that are over top of each other. So what's left here is the x minus 2 all over x plus 2. Pause and try. So again, I rewrite the, the, denom uh, the numerator by x minus 4 times x minus 4 over 6. I factor the denominator in the second rational expression, the GCF. And then I simplify and I multiply across. So in this case, I end up getting x minus 4 all over 9 because I have that 3 times 3. So this next multiplication, I have all trinomials that need to be factored. So again, factoring trinomials is very important when we're working with rational expressions. So as we factor, I always like to write the rules. I see that I have a plus 12 and a minus 7, so they're both going to be the same sign. Factors of 12 that add up to 7 are 3 and 4. I do the same with the denominator there. Positive, positive means that I'm going to have plus, plus. Factors of 20 that add up to 9 is going to be 4 and 5. And then I have a plus, plus, so the rule's going to be x plus, x plus. Factors of 16 that add up to 8, it's going to be 4 and 4. And then I see the difference of two squares, so it's going to be plus, minus, and I'm going to end up with x plus 4, x minus 4. So you have to factor all the trinomials, and once they're factored, then you'll simplify common factors. So again, we're simplifying here. The x minus 4 is going to cancel. The x plus 4, x plus 4. The other x plus 4 and x plus 4. So now we're left with x minus 3 all over x plus 5. Pause and try. So we're doing the factoring here, and we're canceling out the common factors. It's very important that you factor correctly. Again, factors of 16 that will add up to a negative 10, that's that negative 8 and negative 2. Factors of 2 that add up to 3, that, that's 1 and 2. The difference of two squares, x minus x squared minus 1, that's the x minus 1, x plus 1. And then factors of 8 that will add up to 9 is 8 and 1. So again, knowing how to factor is very important here. And now I'm going to simplify, and whatever's left, 
is my answer. So I end up getting x minus 2 all over x plus 2. So now with division of rational expressions, it works the same way as fractions. You're going to have to take the second rational expression and flip it and change to multiplication. So it's similar to fractions where you take the second fraction, flip it, and change it to multiplication. Then you're going to factor both the numerator and the denominator, simplify, and multiply across. So once you change it to multiplication, it's the same step process to multiplication. So the key thing here is with division, the first thing you need to do is change it to multiplication and flip the second fraction or rational expression. So I end up getting the parentheses x plus 3 squared all over 5 times 25 over 5x plus 15. You have to flip that second rational expression. Now I'm going to factor both the numerators and the denominators and then I'm going to simplify. So when I factor the x plus 3 squared, it's x plus 3 plus x plus 3, or times x plus 3, and then I have the GCF in the denominator, so I get 5 parentheses x plus 3. Now I'm going to simplify. The x plus, the 5 goes into 25 5 times, the x plus 3 is canceled out, and don't miss that 5 over 5. So that 5 over 5 is going to also reduce, and I'm going to be left with x plus 3 as my answer. Pause and try. So again, we're separating this. You have to make it multiplication, flip the second rational expression, factor, and then we're going to simplify here. And when we simplify, we see that we're going to end up with x minus 4 all over 9. So now we have a rash, uh, division. So the first thing I want to do is set it up. I'm going to change it to multiplication and flip the second rational expression. We're going to factor here. Now when you factor, keep in mind that 2 minus x, you need to switch around by pulling out a negative 1. So I end up having a negative 1 times 2 minus, or x minus 2. And then I'm going to factor out the GCF here. I get 3 times x, plus, x squared minus 4. And then I have the difference of 2 squares. So I'm going to factor the difference of 2 squares. Now I can simplify. So what's going to simplify here is that 8 and 40, that x minus 2 and the x minus 2, and then I'm going to multiply across. So be careful here because I have x squared times a negative 1, so I get a negative x squared all over 3 times 5 is 15 times that x plus 2. So this is a step-by-step -step process, a more complicated problem of division, but you want to work it step by step to get your solution. Pause and try. So you see here, when you factor, you should have gotten 3 times x minus 3, x plus 3 in the denominator of the first rational expression. Again, you needed to flip the second rational expression and change it to multiplication. I changed the 3 minus x by pulling out that negative 1, and I got a negative 1 times x minus 3. And now when you simplify here, you reduce the common factors, and you multiply across, and your answer should be a negative x to the third all over 21 times x plus 3.